Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Anda sedang menonton Agenda Awani secara langsung dari Studio Awani Bukit Kuala Kuala Lumpur dan kita masih mencari MH370. Di manakah ia? Dan kita semakin mendengar bahawa pencarian ini memakan masa dan menggunakan teknologi yang semakin canggih dan semakin rumit. Uh, Penglibatannya semakin kompleks. Banyak di antara teknologi itu tidak kita miliki tapi sebenarnya ada juga yang kita miliki mungkin tidak secara langsung tapi dalam bidang-bidang yang berkaitan. Oleh itu malam ini kerana kita tahu bahawa penerbangannya berakhir di lautan Hindi sama ada 2500 km ataupun 1000 km dari Perth yang masih akan membabitkan pencarian yang memerlukan kita masuk ke dalam lautan Hindi itu dan melihat apa yang ada di bawah itu. Tidak ada banyak uh, cara yang boleh dilakukan jika kita tidak menguasai teknologi untuk masuk ke dalam dan salah satu cara adalah dengan menggunakan ROV uh, remotely operated vehicle dan dalam konteks itu saya ingin berbicara dalam bahasa Inggeris kerana saya ada rakan dari Australia Paul Kelly uh, thank you so much for coming ketua pegawai eksekutif Total Marine Technology uh, from Perth Australia um, I was just describing how the search for MH370 yes. has got the more complex in terms yes. of utilization and reliance yes. on on the, a lot of high tech uh, stuff and um, in that case i think we quite grateful that australia has a lot of r&d's and a lot of engineering marvels if you may <laughs> and put it that way even the black box for example yes, was, uh, was an invented by an of australian yes. but today i would like or tonight i would like to bring the audience to go with me and you yes. underneath the surface of the indian ocean okay. and what we can do down there because uh, all throughout today my colleague Zan Azli who's in Perth right now went to see uh, the ocean uh, ocean expert and yes. he says that even though it's much much better weather 1000 km north of yes. where uh, the, original the original location was but still full of challenges you yes. know there's underwater trenches and yes. whatever not so we can send submarines that's a given it's not equipped to yes. find and to search and to rescue but we can use our ROVs and through the experience of uh, experiences of oil and gas company yes. which have for years and decades been yes. looking at our ROVs been the ones that have developed the technology so uh, yeah so please yes. tell us about the oil and gas industry and the use of ROV and then later we'll see how that can be utilized to help Malaysians sure. find MH370 yeah sure Cam so you know, ROVs came around for the oil and gas industry because oil exploration went into deeper water and there's physical limitations on divers. So a diver is useful if, you, if you're operating in depths from zero to 100 metres. Okay. But after 100 metres, then it becomes very difficult to put divers into that environment. Yes. And so then ROVs or remotely operated vehicles became the mechanical divers. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. and their purpose was multifunction. So they are okay. like ROVs are like a Swiss Army knife. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are not they are not dedicated to one purpose. They're dedicated to many purposes. Okay. And underwater, it's a harsh environment. Mm -hmm. You know, you never know what you're going to find when you put equipment under the water. Especially in the Indian Ocean. It, especially in the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a lot of different challenges. There is challenges regarding visibility. There's challenges mm -hmm. regarding strong currents, mm -hmm. and challenges regarding surface conditions in yes. which you're launching the ROV mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not common common technology you know mm -hmm. this is uncommon technology yes. you know the oil industry can afford mm -hmm. to drive the technology mm -hmm. into new areas yes. but but it's not something that uh, that you think about one day and you invent the next mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's more about evolution than revolution mm -hmm. okay Paul however when I look at the map because suddenly everybody is focusing on that of part of the world. This, this barren patch of ocean. Yeah. But they, they don't call it the loneliest area <laughs> of Earth for yes. no reason. Yes. There's the Roaring Forties, yes. but there's no one there. And there's no oil rigs or whatever yes. there. So how could this ROV now help within okay. that area? So, so let's, you know, let, let's look at the context, right? So the context is at the moment, we're looking for a haystack, okay? Yes. So, so we have an area to search. And in that area, we have to find this haystack. Mm -hmm. Once we find the haystack, then we look for the needle, okay. right? Now, the ROV is not going to help you find the haystack. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 the technology for the haystack is, mm -hmm. is listening for the pingers, mm 
yes. and uh, and it's scanning the seabed to look mm -hmm. for objects anomalies that mm -hmm. are on the seabed mm -hmm. because at that depth it's very it's very flat so if you see even though the topography might be up and down yep. you will see an object that's laying on the bottom okay. so so you, if you image this object now you found your haystack mm -hmm. now you deploy an ROV mm -hmm. into that area to mm -hmm. go and find the needle okay. okay so it's the ROVs are not wide area search tools mm -hmm. they are very narrow area search tools and and again to give it some context if you look at the depth okay let, let's say as an average the new search area is from 2,000 to 4,000 meters yes. 5,000 meters mm -hmm. so let's just say for easy maths mm -hmm. let's say this this uh, the, the, the recovery depth was 4,500 meters mm -hmm. as an average. Okay. Effectively, I looked up today, and the Petronas Tower is mm -hmm. 452 meters. Yes. You're talking times. at a depth 10 times mm -hmm. the height of the Petronas mm -hmm. Tower. Mm -hmm. That you have to put technology down into the ocean. The water temperature will be less than zero because salt water freezes mm -hmm. at below zero. So, so generally, the water temperature would be down probably minus one, minus two. Mm -hmm. And to get an idea of the pressure. If you imagine a square 2.5 centimetres by 2.5 okay. centimetres, so about the size of your thumb yes. in a square, you've effectively got three tonnes, 3,000 kilos of weight pushing on, on square, every 2.5 square centimetres. Mm -hmm. The average car is probably somewhere like about one and a half tonnes. Mm -hmm. So imagine two cars balancing on each other on a square centimetre, uh, 2.5 square centimetres on the ROV, and that pressure is present everywhere. Okay. Not just on one point, everywhere. Great, Paul. Uh, a quick uh, update on that, but um, I have to go for the first break. What once we are back, I want to see at the different kind of technologies yes. that you put together into just one ROV, of course, right? Yes. So that uh, then we can see because the ROV has got to navigate underneath the ocean, uh, the, the surface of the yes. ocean. So how does it navigate? How does it see? How do you control it? D do you lose uh, more precision of control as you go deeper and deeper because of yes. that two big cars pushing on the you know, small square, for example, kind of pressure? So let's discuss that after this short break and we'll come back with Paul just after this. Thank you, Ken. I have a new friend today and my friend is Paul and Paul is um, good enough to share his experiences, knowledge and know-how about ROVs because uh, MH370 to find it we need ROVs because we need to use technology and the skills of using that technology to look deep into the Indian Ocean for yes. example. But um, I was just asking you that how, what kind of technologies are involved? Just one ROV, because we know that to navigate, we have to rely on sonar and stuff. Yes. But to be able to withstand tremendous pressure down there at 4,000 meters, for example, is another yes. thing altogether. Yes. And then you've got to be pliable enough to be maneuvered remotely, for example. Yes. Cam, it's, you know, the, the solution with an ROV is a marriage between technology and personnel. Okay. You don't have a solution in technology and the solution doesn't solely lie mm -hmm. in the people, okay. but together they provide the tool mm -hmm. that is capable of bringing an outcome. Mm -hmm. What's important to remember is that the purpose of the sensors on the ROV is to give the operator a telepresence. So mm -hmm. the sensors on the ROV try and take the operator from where he's sitting on the vessel mm -hmm. and place him in the centre of the ROV mm -hmm. down at the bottom of the okay. ocean. So there, there is eight cameras, and mm -hmm. the cameras are different. Some of them are used for low light okay. in darker environments. Other ones are used to resolve full colour. There is altimeters, so we know how high we are. Mm -hmm. There are sonars, which are like underwater radars that can give us an image beyond what the cameras can see. And then there's an array of sensors to monitor the health of the ROV, mm -hmm. because you don't want to be down there with a machine that's going to yes. have a breakdown, mm -hmm. right? So, so there the sensor technology that will be used it starts with the cameras and the lights okay. because as humans we are visual so yes. we need to relate to our environment mm -hmm. visually mm -hmm. from there we use the sonar so okay. we look we can't see anything with the cameras and lights so now we need to see beyond the visual envelope and look into the uh, distance to see if we can find an object using acoustics mm -hmm. 
once we locate the object, then we have to navigate the ROV to that location. When the ROV is in that location, we have to assess the worksite to ensure that the ROV will not become tangled or entrapped. Mm -hmm. Once we've done that, then we are now using the manipulators, just as you would use your hands to pick up a cup or to pick up a pen. Mm -hmm. So now we're using the visual information provided back to the operator mm -hmm. with the manipulators okay. that can now retrieve uh, pieces from the ocean. Mm -hmm. And then, then the final task is to take those pieces from the ocean back to the surface. Mm -hmm. And that's not a small task because okay. coming back through four kilometres and coming back through what we call the splash zone, which is the interface between the water and the air, okay. is the most dangerous place. That's where a lot of... You, you can lose an ROV in the splash zone if you have waves coming at, at four or five metres mm -hmm. and it's acting against the ROV. The ROV can no longer use its propellers to keep in position. Okay. So anything that you bring back from the ocean has to be secured in the manipulators to ensure that you're going to have a successful recovery back on deck. But how, how are you going to ensure that whatever you bring back yes. is going to be secure? Because you cannot determine what you find. Yes, for no, that, that, that's right. And, and again, there is ways, just as, as humans solve problems mm -hmm. once the problems are presented, there is a toolbox in the ROV, and that toolbox may be slings. Mm -hmm. So we use the manipulators to put a sling around an object. It may be on the, underneath the ROV, mm -hmm. we have tools that are like drawers, just as you, like your kitchen drawers, okay. where we can put objects in that drawer mm -hmm. and pull it back into the ROV that ensures that it won't fall out when we're coming back through the splash zone. Mm -hmm. So the recovery technique will depend on the size of the object that we're looking for. Certainly in a black box, um, it's, uh, it's more than capable of being held by the manipulator. Mm -hmm. And normally you would bring a second manipulator in and hug that piece of equipment okay. as you're coming back through the splash zone mm -hmm. to ensure that you have a primary and that you have a safety mm -hmm. and it's going to make it back onto deck. So the weather will play a very influential role because what's the maximum height of wave that you, you would be able to operate in an ROV under? I, I wish there was a simple answer. You know, what, what we're talking about here, there would be people that are out with an ROV in this environment uh, are going to be stretching the technology. They're going to be stretching the technology mm -hmm. to achieve an outcome for, for the world that is waiting for an answer. Okay. Okay. But you can't say, is it a four metre swell, is it a five metre swell? Because it depends on the type of vessel you're launching from mm -hmm. and is that vessel rocking and rolling in, the, uh, in the swell. It depends on how you're going to launch the ROV okay. and it depends on the wind and current as well. So there are a number of factors that need to be considered before you can, okay. before you can say, look, we can launch or we can't launch. Well, maybe if we map that to you know, your experiences before sure. in going under and picking up something. Yes. So let's discuss that in the last block that we have okay. and we'll come back just in a few minutes after this. Fantastic. <laughs> Kita masih membicarakan tentang teknologi yang diperlukan untuk membantu kita mencari MH370. Saya ingin merakamkan rasa terima kasih kepada Sampura Kencana kerana Sampura Kencana ada Total Marine Technology dan Total Marine Technology ada Paul. Paul datang ke sini malam ini untuk menceritakan. Saya ingin menyambung dalam bahasa Inggeris dengan izin. Um, I was just telling them I really appreciate that Sampura Kencana has Total Marine Technology and Total Marine Technology has you. And so you're here. Yes. And... Um, during this last block, maybe we can, you can share with us stories of... Uh, because usually, oil and gas industry would use ROVs for oil and gas purposes. Yes, exactly. And that's a bit it's or a lot different it's from... It's removed. Yeah, from search from and rescue. We're talking about search right. and rescue here. The, the, the technology that we're talking about for search and rescue is an amplification of the technology that we use for the oil industry. Okay. So, so we're not talking about... We're not talking about a revolution, we're talking about this evolution of technology. Okay. Oil and gas uh, dictate the level of technology that's required because mm -hmm. commercially it doesn't make sense to oversupply a specification on an ROV. It means 
you make the ROV fit for purpose, okay. able to do the job that's required cool. of it. And you're right, we do, we do pipeline surveys, we, do, we go down on the seabed and we turn valves on and off on wellheads underwater. Mm -hmm. We uh, go down and we cut um, uh, cut metal, yeah. and 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 on all all of these tasks are servicing the oil industry in what they need to bring oil from the middle of the earth back up yeah. into the petrol bowser. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Search and rescue requires a, a, a different skill set, and requires a, a shaping of the technology, okay. and some of that is not going to be defined until we understand uh, uh, the type of recovery operation that we're in. Mm -hmm. So so again, it's this Swiss Army knife approach that. Yeah that you cannot shape the ROV before you understand what you're doing with the ROV. Okay. And that may differ depending on, mm -hmm. on, on the task that's required down at that depth. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so we may in the first instance have instrumentation on there that goes and listens for the pinger. Yes. Okay? And because we're closer to the seabed, mm -hmm. we, can hear that, uh, we can hear that pinger at a greater distance. So you think that will be the immediate use of ROV for, for it, this 20 it's already the 21st day. Look, you, you have to locate this haystack. I go back to that analogy okay. because it's so apt. You have mm -hmm. to use other technology to locate this haystack. And the technology we're talking on the ROV is focused technology mm -hmm. in finding the needle. Right? So we finding have to debris. find the debris, then we have to map it back through the use of current calculation on that day on the air, yes. and then backtrack to where it possibly could have come yes, from. Yes, and then, and then the ROV will go down mm -hmm. and actually try and use the data that was from the, uh, from the survey, mm -hmm. uh, from the, I, I guess, the, the, you know, the survey phase, and correlate that data to where the ROV position is mm -hmm. to locate the anomaly that was on the seabed. So mm -hmm. we have an anomaly here, we have an ROV here. Remember that it's this four kilometres down. Yes. We have to swim it in to mm -hmm. the object. We have mm -hmm. to find it with sonar, mm -hmm. and then we have to visualise it. If we can't visualise it, then the ROV has no purpose. So the tow ping locator is very, very instrumental. Yeah, I, I think you go down with, with all the equipment that you can think of that's mm -hmm. going to assess you, uh, mm -hmm. assist you mm -hmm. in achieving a successful outcome. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've, you've read and studied uh, the Air France 447. Yes. They didn't find it uh, within the first time no. of the search and rescue. It yes. took more than one year, Yes. for example. So that means that they didn't rely only on finding it by the ping that's uh, generated. Yes, correct. Correct. This is not, you know, although everybody wants quick resolution and they want to see things moving forward progressively in a time frame that makes sense uh, to, to, to achieve this outcome, but we're talking about difficult technology, difficult conditions in a very remote part of the world. Mm -hmm. And to put these packages together of the right vessel with the right ROV, mm -hmm. the right people to run it, mm -hmm. is, not, is not an instant fix. You know, we don't want to go down there. I mean, you know, as, uh, as TMT and Sapura Kinshana, we have mm -hmm. technology that will go down to this depth in Perth now. Okay. But we are part of the overall landscape mm -hmm. that AMSA and others are looking at to see what is going to be the best solution to mm -hmm. achieve a successful mm -hmm. outcome. Mm -hmm. you know, now, it will be a marriage of companies and technologies. Mm -hmm. no, no single company has a magic bullet in this. Yes. It, it, it's this marriage and this synergy of technology that will, that will get the job done. And I have no, there's no doubt in my mind that, that we will find this object. Mm -hmm. what, what, what we have to consider is, what length of time is going mm -hmm. to be reasonable. Mm -hmm. And that factors into the whole DNA of the search and rescue. Because yes. if you rush things, and you know, you're the expert for the ROV, but I want it to be done in two days, and you say yeah, you need five days, for example, that's not going to cut it because no. everybody would have to bring added value to this table yes. that we're looking at. And there's not many people with expertise in no. deep sea ROVs. We, 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 we have a saying in the ROV industry, there is always time to do it right. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And that's because if you try and do it wrong, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. okay? And so, so, you know, in understanding the environment, will feed back into the preparation. And the success and failure of this job is not so much what the ROV does on location, but it's how we set the ROV up prior to its arrival to location, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, the time scale is variable because the time scale needs to suit the technology and the technology needs to be right. Mm -hmm. If the ROV breaks down or the ROV falls off the end of the umbilical when we're halfway through mm -hmm. a search, 
what have, what have we added? We've added no value, yeah. right? And you've created another pro issue. And, 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 problem, and, and we've, yeah. crea we've created another frustration. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, you can't <coughs> cheat physics. Okay. I have a few minutes left. Sure. I'm going to come from the human factor now. You know, um, you're one of the co-founders of GMT. Yes. Even when it's brought over by Sabarak and Chandra, you yes. remain. So your passion in this particular field of subject matter is very deep, as deep as the Indian Ocean. <laughs> so as an engineer at heart, yes, wouldn't this be a riddle that you really want to solve? Helping is a given, looking yes. at what you have said. But as an engineer looking at this, this might change also the way ROVs are set up for the future. We, we can't escape the fact that, 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 that this is a mission that has a very human dimension. Mm -hmm. And engineering can be very removed from emotion, but, yep. but, but in this circumstance, we can't. And challenge always causes growth, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. challenge brings about this stretching of the knowledge mm -hmm. to suit the situation, right? And I have no doubt that, that, that this situation, every engineer that has the privilege of becoming a, a, on board with this will be doing it for the families and, and to gain an outcome so that people can move on mm -hmm. in this situation. And that's a privileged position to be because as engineers, mm -hmm. we get to deal with technology. We don't yes. often get to deal with people, yes. right? But this is, this is what, this is, what is, going to, is going to take the capability to the next level. Mm -hmm. So we may not have all of the technology assembled, but we will make sure that the outcome is one that is grounded in science, yes. but, will, but will be stretched by the circumstance. And it is also a science that we know we're going to get into more and more. Yes. Because when we look at the oil and gas industries of the world, more and more deep sea offshore Yes. For example, I look at the number of ships working off the deep sea of Brazil, and, and like yes, it's like traffic jam in KL. If well, you, well, I put that relatively. So if we're gonna do humankind, it's gonna do more activities around deep parts of the ocean. So this technology has got to be improved enough yes. for us to navigate and face these kind of challenges? It, it will come. I mean, the reason that we, that we developed technology that could go to 3,100 metres was because mm -hmm. of Sapura Kinchana's push into Brazil, where mm -hmm. there is a deep water environment, mm -hmm. the deepest water environment in the world for yep. oil and gas. Mm -hmm. As we search for energy, as that need for energy mm -hmm. becomes more urgent, then we will, we will explore deeper waters, not only for oil and gas, but for undersea mining. Mm -hmm. So there is a number of convergent reasons why mm -hmm. ROV technology needs to go deeper, mm -hmm. but it needs to be led by commercial justification. So someone has to have the need before we provide the, the it's answer. It's not just about technology, it's also about human it's aspect and the talent in it. Yes, right. exactly right, exactly okay. right, Cam. Thank you so much. I think that's also the conclusion Thank of you. the Oil and Gas Conference recently, yes. that the battles for talent, and talent will move technology and whatever else. And we hope the talents of the world coming together to find MH370, we'll find an answer to that. Thank you so much sure for, for making time for this. Terima kasih banyak kepada anda. Hantarkan pandangan anda sendiri dalam pelbagai platform yang Astro Awani ada. Boleh pergi Instagram, Facebook, Twitter atau terus pergi ke laman sesawaastroawani.com atau terus muat turun aplikasi mudah alih Astro Awani. Anda boleh menonton rancangan seperti ini secara langsung di gadget mudah alih yang anda uh, gemari. Sekian, jumpa lagi. Thank you so much. Selamat malam. <laughs> You've been learning so many... Thank <laughs> you.